This is Puerto Escondido. Perfect beaches, famous surf, and endless days of sunshine. For many, this Pacific coastal town is a little slice of paradise and has led to a staggering growth of tourism. Here. In 2022, Puerto Escondido was dubbed the coolest holiday spot of the year. The population is growing. There are now over 56,000 people that call this place their home, and this number is expected to go up. Behind the beautiful beaches lies a more complex story. Like many other developing coastlines, it dawned on us that the town appears to be facing an unsustainable issue. Una tapa. Una tapa, basura, otro plástico, puro pedazo de botella, pedazo de plástico, tapas, tapas, un peine, un peine, un pedazo de plástico y otra tapa, otra tapa. Un pedazo de plástico, eh, otro pedazo de plástico, y eh, todo lo que tenía este lado hoy, sacamos para hablar, y esto es lo que tiene, para que vean qué mal está el mundo. Puerto Escondido is just the paragon of a coastal city in Latin America with rapid urbanization processes without government planning, with not a lot of a citizen sensibility on how much we're growing. As population grows, as the number of visitors is also growing in spite of COVID, so does waste. Because of the way that humans have thought about consumer products as having a linear life, we've just created a bunch of dumps all over the world that don't necessarily stay as mountains of waste. Most of those plastics end up in our oceans. So next to climate change, water supply, and safe food. Plastic pollution is one of the most important environmental problems on the planet. Mi nombre es Lorenzo Castillo Herrera. Soy gerente operativo del Comité de Playas Limpias del municipio de Santa María Colotepec y yo me dedico a, a los temas de sustentabilidad para Puerto Escondido. A lo largo de los años, eh, a medida que crece la población, hay, no hay un equilibrio entre la sustentabilidad y el turismo. Eh, yo nací en el 68, entonces en la década de los 70 había muchísima naturaleza, flora, fauna, biodiversidad y ya ahorita se nota el cambio porque hemos transformado los lugares. Pero la sensibilidad de los temas ambientales es regresar como era el pasado. Queremos nuevamente caminar y recuperar lo que podamos hacer y lo que no se pueda recuperar pues ya no seguir eh, transformándolo. ¿no? Tenemos eh, turismo muy consciente que nos trae educación de toda esa combinación que, que con ideas, con apoyos de reciclaje, sustentabilidad, conservación, pero también tenemos un turismo que, pues vamos a decir, depredador, que se lleva a la naturaleza, que no cuida el medio ambiente, que hay contenedores de residuos y no los utiliza. Es una mezcla de todo. Hay muchos, muchos problemas. Primero porque todo el país, en todo México, no hay un manejo de residuos. Entonces, eh, con el paso de los años, ha sido más el crecimiento poblacional y también de turismo. Y lo que se ha hecho generalmente es tener espacios sí. donde se deposita la basura. Y, y esto es un caminar que pues, pasarán varios años, pero ya empezamos. Lo más importante es ya, ya estar conscientes de que si no lo hacemos, nos vamos a complicar. People starting to talk about Puerto Escondido's plastic problem. But our conversation has triggered more questions about where our trash ends up.
Normally what happens is we put it inside a bin hoping and trusting that municipality cleanup workers will put it in a truck and the truck will drive it somewhere. <laughs> Most of us don't really know where. Nothing could prepare us for where this story would go. Mountains of garbage can be found on the outskirts of many Latin American towns. Informal workers, known as pepenadores, sift through the garbage to select materials that can be recycled. These are sold at a minuscule price onto larger recycling bodies. Their work is not recognized by the government. This means they don't receive a salary or any workplace protections. They earn their money, piece by piece, for the plastic they collect. Me dedico a recolectar el, el plástico, lo que es el bote de PET y el plástico duro, lo que son sillas, cubetas, mm -hmm. todo eso, ¿sí? Y... y la lata de chile. Ese es puro plástico, pero es un plástico tostado. Que no, no, no lo reciben, pues cosa peligrosa, sí. sí. A veces llegan este, pues algunos tiros, algunas bombas de, de camioneta, ¿ves? y a veces cuando prende explota. ¿no? ¿En serio? Sí, sí. Luego, en el tiempo de agua, pues se corta uno mucho. Uh -huh. Sí, el vidrio, las manos, los pies, las agujas, uh -huh. sí, clavos, a veces no lo veo, no es, es pica. ¿no? Sí, ese metal. Gracias. Es más, como le dijera yo, es más trabajoso y más sencillo. Uh -huh. y, lo que, y lo que es, es respetuoso. Sí. Porque aquí no andamos robando, ni jalando, ni nada. Uh -huh. que no, no, es sí. 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 The waste pickers, who live in the neighboring town or Puerto Escondido, don't have vehicles. They have a grueling one hour walk up the mountainside in the sun. The risk to life is huge, and there are many hidden dangers among the trash. Sometimes, fires release hazardous fumes which are inhaled by those working there. The average life expectancy of an informal waste picker in Mexico is just 39 years old. It is clear that poor waste management has alarming impacts on the environment, society and the economy. Open landfills are 23 times more dangerous to the environment than carbon dioxide. Eh, bueno, nosotros desde SICANDA trabajamos principalmente por eh, generar mejores condiciones laborales para las personas recicladoras, comúnmente conocidas como pepenadores. Lo que intentamos con nuestro trabajo es eh, dignificar el trabajo y profesionalizar la labor que hacen estas personas para con esto generar mejores condiciones de trabajo, mejores salarios, mejores condiciones de vida para las personas y sus familias. ¿no? Entonces, para nosotros eh, uno de los retos mayores es justamente dignificar el trabajo que hacen y generar mejores condiciones laborales. Si anda abierta educativa o formativa, ¿no? dirigido hacia este grupo de población, la mayoría de ellos apenas sabe leer y escribir, 
Entonces se diseñó un programa muy específico, normalmente ellos desconocen incluso el funcionamiento, la ley, la norma, pues, ¿no? ¿Qué se hace con los residuos? Creemos que tiene que ser un cambio de las personas, de la comunidad, pero también impulsado por las autoridades, porque aunque las personas eh, hagan, por ejemplo, la separación de sus residuos, si no hay un correcto programa municipal, son esfuerzos que al final no sirven como debieran, ¿no? This is obviously a problem that is not only for Puerto Escondido, it's a planetary problem because humans are just everywhere and it ends up always in our oceans or breaking down into microplastics that can be absorbed by the water system of the earth and you will have it for breakfast or in your next bottle of water even if it says that it's been purified somewhere. Many Mexican states have a ban on single-use plastics but it appears that federal government support for recycling initiatives is scarce. There are, however, some small organizations who are trying to change the narrative. I was kind of worried about all this huge amount of plastic that to the ocean, uh, rivers and all the stuff. I just start with um, what I had in, in my hands. For example, this is a first vehicle from La Plastica. I used this with a, with a bike. Just start going no matter where, just uh, picking up all the plastic. When we started, we took about 11 months to collect our first load. Uh, it was 350 kilos. When I went to receive my first payment, it was like 700. And I almost, well, not almost, I cried because it took very hard effort. I said, my father, I talked with him and I said, okay, daddy, I know you're gonna support me and we're gonna keep on on this. And well, we have passed eight, eight years right now. We are three on the team, my father, my mate Marcelo, and me in this case. I came into contact with Jesus. This project is the love of his life and had been supporting him for the last six years with this project. It's recycling plastics, cardboard, different kinds of plastics. We collect, we separate, and we try to move the plastic out of here. Unfortunately, there's no recycling facilities which melts down and reuses the plastic here. So we go with our truck and we pick up plastics from hotels, restaurants, private residents, communities. We bring the plastic back here. We separate it, which is hard plastic, soft plastic. Basically, the people that we sell it to pick it up, they take it to another city, they crush it, mm -hmm. and then it gets shipped to Mexico City. Actually, with our program and a few other programs that are in the area, it's actually helping control the, the trash flow of plastic out there. So, to give you an example, when I started, there was 47 points. Now, I think we're at 219 points. Well, this right here has been going on now for almost two months. Mm -hmm. On an average, around two tons of plastic every month and a half. Like we're getting three pesos and 70 cents for a kilo of plastic. Mm -hmm. It's not about the money for us, it's just basically so we can help clean the environment. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what we want. Yeah. We don't want to see it in the streets, it goes to the ocean, we all surf, swim, we fish. The overall impact is huge if we don't keep at it. What Madeline Plus Lab is doing at, at its core is it's trying to create a citizen-led hub where we can all learn together about the plastics we use, why we use them, which we could do without, which we could replace, and most of all, how and where we could recycle them. Our vision as a lab is changing our own relationships to plastics into a more consumer conscious and planetary friendly way of living on this earth as guests. This is not our planet, people. This is the nice house where we are guests. The majority of the plastic ends up either in the ocean or on the beach somewhere where it shouldn't or in the garbage, but then even all of that just ends up in the landfill on fire. Mm -hmm. So there's no final resting place for any of the plastic that feels good. If I'm in Chidrawi, in like the, the two liter soda, I, like, I can't help but have this thought when I look at that of like, all of this stuff will outlive me. Like all of it, which is just a really depressing thought, you know? And I think we need like huge systemic changes going forward. A lot of it for me came from like noticing in these big WhatsApp chats with a lot of the expats and, and other fellow gringos that are, are calling Puerto home now. I don't know, people having like all these strong opinions of like, this is changing and the prices are going up and like there's cigarettes on the beach. What we ended up with was a bunch of small recycling collection points that are just for plastic only that feed to a bigger collection point 
that will then get picked up by our third party partner who's an organization called Hoogla Plastica. And the idea for us, like how to collect it was, let's use uh, local businesses and organizations as our mini collection points and as our sort of partners in the project. We, we are working with eight different businesses in La Punta. They're wonderful and they've been, they've been a huge help in getting this off the ground. So business owners are, are changing the narrative uh, about plastics in Puerto by uh, implementing some anti-plastic programs. Pretty amazing how plastic straw campaign kind of struck Puerto, I think it was three or four years ago. And literally within two, three months, uh, there were no more plastic, or almost no more plastic uh, straws in Puerto. Uh, I think people really care here because otherwise they wouldn't be living by the ocean. First major problem that we noticed after a week after launch was like, you know, as much as we put only plastic on the signs, people were putting food and everything else that shouldn't be in there. And I was like, ah, people, <laughs> just do this, help me. This has been a ton of effort, but if like we save that much plastic from going in the ocean and the landfill to be set on fire, it feels like a pretty good uh, use of time and energy. Our recycling program mm -hmm. encourages businesses to give end users or people who are you know, walking up and down the streets the opportunity to drop their plastic conveniently in a plastic uh, recycling bin and therefore reduce the amount of plastic that end up in the oceans. Puerto's kind of like on the rise and really filling with people and filling with construction and filling with waste. Yeah, I think the education piece, both like, you know, locals, expats, tourists, across the board, we, we can do a little bit better on just like kind of understanding how it all ties together. Even for us, like, you know, long-term travelers and, and expats and even just short-term tourists that come through, like our education on how we can like, you know, contribute positively to the situation by like minimizing our waste, by, you know, contributing, putting our waste into a, a plastic recycling system like the one that there is now, and just getting a ground, like a ground-based understanding of like, What is the setup currently? Yo creo que de cinco años para acá, que yo soy gerente operativo de playas, sí ha habido una transformación en el país y queremos buscar lugares donde antes de que llegue la basura a esos lugares, eh, la separemos y podamos darles pues, un buen uso, este, reutilizarla, eh, valorizar esa, esos residuos para que eh, cuando lleguen a... A, a esas montañas, a esos depósitos, eh, empieza a ocurrir lo contrario. You can start by looking at your own plastic consumption, finding out if in your immediate community you are already reducing, if you are replacing, if you are refusing plastic, if you are separating it. Get in touch, support and get involved with local and international projects where you can make a difference because it takes every human on the planet. It really does take, you know, a community to make a project like this work. It can't just be like, I care enough for this to work. Like, there's no chance it'll work like that. Um, we need these business partners to work. We need just your average person who shows up here for two weeks to read the sign and understand it's not for your cigarette butt, it's for plastic. And we're really trying to do something here to help with this environmental issue that we have going on. Garbage is a concept because there are materials that if we manage correctly should never become garbage. Our waste doesn't have to be waste. They can be materials that can be, most of them, salvaged and recycled or upcycled that we could put back into Earth. Puerto Escondido's plastic crisis is sadly not unique. Nor is the solution to this wide-reaching problem straightforward. There are efforts to shift this narrative, but systemic change cannot be achieved through just one single route. Pon atención a todo lo que te rodea y, y trata de vivir en armonía, en empatía, como la naturaleza te lo da. The future of Puerto Escondido is in our hands.